What has happened, guys? So we got the Honda Rincon here. So we bought this four-wheeler. We sold all this crap to buy this four-wheeler. And I was looking at the four-wheeler market when I was shopping, and I was like, this is freaking nuts. Like, these things are selling for stupid money. And I bought this one. You know, it came with a clean title, all this sort of stuff. It has 2,600 miles. And I'm like, you know, I'm like, I thought this was a good deal. With a couple small things, it really is actually a really nice ATV. I just got to do all the new clips. I'm going to do back to black on uh, all the plastics to make them all shiny again. I'm taking the racks and I'm gonna be coating them so they look brand new. I mean, like all the stuff, like just, just little stuff that could be redone to make this thing look super, super clean. I'm like, you know what? I might relist it and just see if I can make some money on it. So I released it based on what I was finding yesterday. I found like two within 100 miles around here. One was five grand. One was 55, and the one that was 55 had more hours and more miles than this one. So I thought, you know what? I bought this thing for 4,000 bucks. I'm gonna list it for 5,500 and just see what happens. And you wouldn't believe it. I had messages coming in right that night within a couple hours of listing it, people asking, is it still available? I wanna come check it out. When can I come check it out? When I come check it out? I'm like, you know, back up, hold up, let me, give me some time. I thought maybe it would take a little while. Yeah, that's how that was going. So now what I'm just gonna try to do is do those few things I wanted to to fix it up just to make it look that much nicer. That way when somebody gets here, they're not like, oh, well, you know, I, I can't give you the money. You know, it's, you know, it's got a couple little things here that I need. I wanna make sure there's no excuses. And like for this thing being 14 years old or however old it is, I don't even really remember. It's gonna be in pretty darn good looking condition for the age compared to what's out there. And actually I had to put a new battery in it this morning. I went to go freaking start it this morning. The battery was freaking dead. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. I was like, I was wondering why it was kind of hard to start when I went to pick it up, but well, he must have had the battery just kind of on a trickle charger until I got there. Didn't tell me by the way. You know, I put a brand new battery in it and it was only like 60 bucks. And then I have all new clips for the panels on it, which was like $8. And then the can of stuff to coat these frame, the, uh, not the frame, the rack was like, I want to say 14 bucks. So I'll have like less than a hundred dollars in some small TLC on it. And I've already got a guy that said he's going to try to come tomorrow with cash in hand for $5,500 on this thing. I would be kind of a fool not to take it if he actually does bring cash and he doesn't try to gouge me on the price. But if he's like, oh no, I can't do it. You know, and he just tries to stick me low on the number. I really don't care to sell it because we will use the living crap out of this thing. But yeah, let's get to it. Here's the rack painted up. It actually looks pretty good. It's not paint actually. It's Rust-Oleum truck bed pro grade black with a textured finish. And it says that there are no peel guarantees. I don't know how true that is. I don't know, uh, but uh, that's what it says. And we did get a little overspray right there. We have to scrape off and then we get a little bit right here. We got to scrape off, but other than that, turned out pretty good. Actually looks really, really stinking good. Like it looks so much better. So there's one that's all coated, right? And then you've got one that's not been coated. Okay, you get all the chips and all the scratches and all the, yeah, not so pleasant, not so pleasant. So that's what it, that's what it looks like. So that's what we're going to do with the rear as well. However, I'm not going to do the rear today. I just wanted to test it out on the front just to see if we liked it. And yeah, look at this. So if you guys couldn't tell, clearly this wasn't the original like toolbox cap or lid or whatever you want to call it. So the guy had bought a different one and painted it. The wrong color of tan, by the way. And I put painter's tape on it. And as soon as I just pulled it off, it just ripped the paint off. So I'm gonna see if I can find an actual tan one. I don't know if I'll be able to or not because it's not the most common color of Rincon, but I'll see if I can find one and get the right one put on there. Got the dually pulled into the shop, which by the way, you can enter to win this truck plus five grand right now at lmpgear.com. And all you gotta do is buy anything on the store and right now until April 12th, which is coming up quick, Every $1 gets you 10 entries instead of one. So if you want to get 10 times the bonus entries, you got to get in right now. So what we're going to be doing is turning up the AFC housing a little bit on this truck to get a little bit more fuel, a little bit more soot out of the tailpipe. And I know, I know, there's going to be the guys that are leaving the comments. Smoke isn't power and all that other stuff. I understand. It's just one of those things that I admire when I'm looking out my mirror 
I like to see a little smoke here there, you know what I'm saying? We're going to be taking off the AFC housing, making some small adjustments. I did a video like this a long time ago. So if you guys are looking for the most efficient way to tune your AFC housing to make sure there's no smoke, but all the fuel you can get on a stock or mostly stock truck, this might not be the video for you, I'm sorry. I know those guys out there that strive to make sure there's not a dusting of smoke out of their tailpipe because, oh man, that diesel is getting expensive. I don't want to waste any fuel, which is totally understandable because it is getting expensive. And well, what's the point of buying fuel if you're just going to be wasting it? But the aspect of these old trucks and the aspect of diesel, one of the things that I really admire is being able to see a little bit of smoke come out the tailpipe once in a while. And I'm not going to lie, I'm guilty of admiring that. So we're going to be taking off the intake horn and taking off the AFC housing and getting that out. If you're wondering what the heck I just did, I took this, if you can see that tamper proof it was just a basic, you know, round, you know, riveted screw style thing, whatever, so you couldn't take it off. I just made a notch in it so it's just like a flathead style so I can take it out easy. So I got all my little flathead style screws loose, so I'm just gonna take a hand screwdriver, loosen them one by one. Now I gotta get that tamper proof off the top of this too. Totally forgot about that one. I'm just gonna leave it plugged in this time in case I gotta use it again, but I, I don't think I will. So now people, let's get to the fun stuff here on this AFC housing. 10 mil on the back here, undo that. You really just gotta loosen it. Make sure you don't lose these things here, you need those. So I just loosened it with my wrench. Take this off, take this off. There's a big flat washer on the back here. And then there's a more beveled out one, a more belled out one here on the back side. Don't rip this diaphragm, but you're just gonna flop these around here just like that. And that is it for that portion of it. Take your 10 mil again. Doesn't need to be super tight. It's just gotta be snug. There, that's all you do for that. And now we gotta crack loose this 10 mil on the other side. Just get a good grip on it. Just like that. Take the flathead, pry behind there. Oops. Don't scrape your fingers. <laughs> Pull this pin out here. You might need to pry it a little more with your flathead. There's that pin. Just pull that out. And then you've got your piece here that slides on that track inside there. Keep track of that dude. And then what we're gonna do is take our grinder and we're just gonna slowly brush the back of this and we're gonna take off about an eighth of an inch. Doesn't need to be exactly an eighth, but that's what we're gonna do for this. I'm replicating basically what I did to my silver dually back when I got that three years ago. So. We're gonna get to that right now. I recommend you wear some gloves that make it very, very hard for you to cut yourself by accident because it can happen. So I just shaved off about an eighth of an inch off the back there. That's all you wanna do for that. We're gonna take this, we're gonna put this back where it came from. I'm gonna put it right back where it was center. Just tighten back in. Just got the washers flipped. Cut this ground down a little bit. We're gonna take this nut off right here. Kinda hard to break loose for the first time ever. That dude's been in there for, I don't know, 20 some years. We can actually put this back on because it'll make it a little bit easier to do what we're about to do. And so now what we're gonna do is make sure this is aligned properly so it doesn't flop side to side. You gotta align it with this um, rod that the diaphragm attached to. So we're gonna thread this in and we're gonna stop screwing it in once we see that rod start to push and move this foot here. And I like to do it holding it like this so that you can see gravity work against itself to make sure that you don't do it the wrong way. 
So now I have an Allen head holding that screw in place and I'm gonna hand tighten that nut in to where it touches. But if you can't turn it by hand, just grab a wrench. Still keep the Allen key in position so that you don't screw it in way too far. We got the AFC housing all put back together and back in the truck. This truck actually does not have a fuel plate in it. The previous owner has taken it out. So therefore, we did not do any fuel plate modifications. I guess taking it out is kind of a modification, but the one in this truck is completely taken out. So when you see these results going down the road, just make sure you keep that in mind. And so now what we're actually gonna do is put on some bed fender lights. But before that, I'm gonna back the truck out so I actually have some room. need a small flatbed or not but I'm gonna grab one just in case it's been a while since I've done one of these LED bedside light kits it's actually been since my first dually since I've done one of these but I'm pretty sure I do is pop these off but then you take those out and swap it out but these could already be LEDs I'm not sure but regardless if they're LED or not they're not smoked so we're gonna get these changed out well they weren't the plug-and-play like they were advertised which they said good for you know I think it was 94 or 95 to 2002 is what it said 3500s but uh, the they they were not plug and play but we did wire them up with butt connectors and uh, it was no problem it worked they're in they're on I'll show you the other side here they're all they're all good so uh, we're gonna actually take this down the road here I was gonna wash this but we're gonna be running out of daylight here fairly soon. I know it looks really bright, like there's tons of daylight left, but there's really not actually. So I'm actually gonna take this down the road here and actually see if I notice any kind of a difference in the tailpipe smoke quota. So it's gonna be kind of hard because the tip's kind of hidden behind the tire and the fender. So with the wind that we've been having, it's just been crazy. I might not be able to notice it very much, but we'll pay attention and We'll look close and see what happens. Well, so far I'm not really getting the response I was hoping for. I mean, not only I mean, this guy's in a hurry, look at him. Can't even let me turn. But not only am I not seeing smoke, it feels like I have less power. because none of those tamper-proof screws had been tampered with. None of them were notched out to make any kind of adjustments with the power screw or anything else. So I was kind of like shocked. I know that the fuel plate was taken out, but I thought that that was the only thing that they really did. But I mean, maybe not. still doesn't smoke now if you're at idle and you hit the pedal a little bit here and there it'll still puff a little bit of black smoke but it already did that before what are you gonna do I did actually manage to find time here to quickly spray down the truck I looked at the clock and I'm like, oh, I got about a half hour. So we got the truck sprayed down real quick. But anyways, that is gonna put a wrap on this video. It kind of seemed like almost a waste of doing the how to adjust the whole AFC housing thing. And you know, maybe there's 
some slight modifications that I could have done a little bit differently, which I may come back to for Friday's video. So make sure you guys subscribe and stay tuned. We post every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, so don't miss the videos. There's tons of playlists, almost 800, or actually, I think there's getting close to a thousand videos on this channel. If you want to see all the content we've done over the last almost four years now, definitely go check out the videos. There's tons of stuff. I'm gonna go watch my video when I did this myself. Back when I did it a few years ago, I thought I had it memorized on how to do it. Clearly I missed something because I said, oh, here's how to do this and it didn't do anything. Nothing changed. So I'm gonna go back and watch my own video and hopefully make the proper adjustments. Hope that we can get this thing adjusted just to, just to, with a little bit more fuel. Guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Even though that didn't pan out, we did get those side fender lights on and the LEDs look really good. We did get those put on. We did coat the front rack on the ATV. I'll let you know what happens with that. I might just, I don't know, part of me is like, well, I could sell it, make some money real quick, like literally in like 24 hours of owning it. Part of me is like, do I really want to deal with finding another one and dealing with another seller and dealing with, you, you get what I'm saying? So I don't know, part of me is just like, I bought it with cash from crap at Atlanta around the barn. It's in our barn, let's just keep it, let's run it and uh, get to work using it. But let me know what you thought of it in the comment section below. If you haven't done so yet, enter to win this truck, plus $5,000 cash with every $1 you spend at lmpgear.com, getting you 10 entries only until April 12th. Thank you guys so much. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.